Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Cravel coming to you from beautiful northern Michigan. And I hope you all, all of you in the U.S. are having a nice holiday weekend. And all of you not in the U.S., I just, well, I guess I just hope you're having a nice weekend. <laughs> so I had a couple more clips and I thought, you know, this booze isn't going to drink itself. So I, I might I might as well. I might as well have a have a little happy hour. Um, I actually I wanted to give some thanks here. One is a little clip sent to me by Chervini on, on Discord. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a ruling on this. It, it, it appears it appears that uh, that Judge Middleton holds uh, TJ uh, in contempt for not wearing pants. <laughs> but the audio isn't that clear. I, I don't know. I'm gonna need a ruling from the chat. And then uh, also Jess Curras, uh, I, I did uh, sent me some clips from Judge Simpson's courtroom. He had a landlord, landlord tenant call. I did one of them, but uh, she sent me some more and there, there'll be links to that. Uh, she's got a page, so you, you can check those out there. But uh, apparently I need to watch more of the call because uh, both of these clips are excellent as well. It's, it's just it's just fun to watch Judge Simpson uh, rightfully lose his mind. <laughs> so we've got that. Oh, I've got a little. I've got a little fun from our, our our friend Judge Knight. I haven't seen him in a while, but I like that. And I and that one, that one. I'm warning you. You might you might learn something. I'm I, I'm showing that mostly because I learned something watching it. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys will be into that or not, but uh, it it kind of shows extradition on a on a whole different level that, that that I wasn't aware of. So let's get this thing started, shall we? TJ contempt for not appearing. Well, TJ in contempt for not wearing pants. Uh, <laughs> what? And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Okay, well that's it. That's all the clip I have. Uh, where where am I here? Oh, I I need to get on the screen. That's all the clip I have. Uh, it, it sounds to me like he says, I mean, he's joking, obviously, doesn't mean it. And, and I think it's charming because TJ's like, what? What did I do? <laughs> Am I being held in contempt for no pants? <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll carry on. We've, we've got a couple of good Judge Simpson clips coming up here. Or the dogs get it. Maybe. All right. Judy Weinberger versus Chelsea Cotterman. Present, Your Honor. Here we go. Ed Taylor appearing on behalf of Ms. Whitebird. I'm here. Here. Okay. I, I hear, I'm here, everybody's here. I need here. Chelsea Cotter is here. Thank you, Uncle Bullhorn, and happy birthday to you. Chelsea, say your name again. You're not coming up on my screen. Chelsea Cotterman's here. Okay, there you are. Okay. All right. All right. This is. Thank you. Why do I have a motion for for May twenty seventh? Now I have a motion for court intervention. What is that about? There was no throuple. Um. There was no. Be on if I may. There's a plumbing yeah. problem. This is uh, attorney Edward Taylor, Ms. Weinberg. There's a plumbing problem, and uh, Mrs. Weinberg has not been allowed to go in and, and fix the problem. These are all lies, Your Honor. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. That's, first of all, not how we work in court. Okay. You know, just yell out. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to talk to me. Mr. Okay. Taylor, go. I love the way he handles that. I, I mean, it's just so inappropriate, but he doesn't, he doesn't get crazy about it. He, he does later. But he doesn't yet. Uh, here's here's proof that the man's trying. You know, he just calmly says, no, 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 it's not how we do it. And by the way, thank you very much, Felinda. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Chase. Yes, uh, Yona, there was an accident on the uh, upper level apartment, and the lower unit person left because it <laughs> caused extensive damage. Uh, Ms. Weinberg attempted to go in and fix the problem, but the tenants would not allow her to go in. So she also volunteered to put these uh, 
the tenants up in an apart um, in the hotel room and they refused to go. So at this point, the lease was over June 30th. She wants her possession of her property back, Your Honor. Okay, the, the attorney's doing a good job. I thought he was overselling it until I saw the rest of the clip. And no, it's just a straight recitation of the facts. He, 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 does, he does a nice job there. Also, thank you, Daylight Disinfectant. I can't imagine Thomas Jefferson would be proud of me. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll, I'll pretend to agree. That sounds good. Okay, but that's not going to happen right now. We've got a hearing on possession set for the A. Then I don't know why this is. This is because of the plumbing problem, Your Honor. She, she needs to get in there and fix the problem, and they won't allow her in. All right. Okay. Ms. Cotterman, yes, what's your Your position on this? Okay. Okay. So on this, I've seen a few landlord-tenant things. He tends to be pretty pro-tenant, the way I view it. He's a good you, – you, you know I love Judge Simpson, but I think he's – I think he leans uh, a little too much that way sometimes. I mean, he's trying to apply the law. So I was afraid he was just going to do this. The scenario is you have a bad plumbing problem. It's screwing up a place. The tenant won't let him in to fix it. And for all the world, those facts appear to be the facts. I mean, the tenant certainly doesn't dispute it. Okay, so I have been without water since Memorial Day. And I have uh, contacted the Attorney General Back in April 8th, I filed a motion. I'm sorry to keep it wrong, but I've contacted the attorney general. If you don't have water in your apartment, the attorney general is not the first person to call. That right there, she lost me. I, I have zero sympathy. I, I, I don't care. I think she needs to be tased, honestly. <laughs> You'll see Judge Simpson comes around to that idea as well. And her, her lawyer, Judy Weinberger's lawyer, uh, got in the way and said that there we were already in a motion with court with the Sarah thing that you are going to see me again on the eighth floor, and blocked it. So then, so she's saying that we are the problems to cause the the plumbing issue when she was the one blocking my phone calls and not answering me from April eighth, causing this whole issue to happen. And now since she busted in my house I, on Memorial Day, sorry, go ahead, Your Honor. Thank you. Sorry. So why is the water off? I can answer that, Your Honor. I Why can answer that. Okay. On, on Memorial Day, the tenant in the lower apartment came home from a trip to find her apartment flooded. The ceiling literally caved in on her, on her possessions, and there was water, sewage water, all over the apartment. We cannot find where it's leaking, but Ms. Cotterman informed me that the upstairs bathroom flooded and we had to turn off the water to stop it leaking all over and damaging the property. But since that, she has not allowed anyone in to fix anything. All right, Ms. Cotterman, why haven't you allowed anybody in, if that's true? She, has, she did not give me any notice. All right, I'm going to... No, 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 but, but I did give her notice. Stop, stop, stop. This is stupid. Yep. If right. you got water in your apartment, you let the landlord in so they can fix it. I no, I tried to notice let or know. not notice. Don't don't interrupt me. When do you want to go in? If you're asking me, I'd like to go in as soon as possible with a plumber. Okay, I can't put just ASAP. What day do you want to go in? Um, Tuesday. Tuesday, the 5th of July. Council, I need you to prepare an order for the court's signature and get that over to the court. I'm going to order that the plaintiff may enter the premises to accomplish necessary repairs to the property that will that permission to enter the premises and do what is necessary shall be for all of july 5th the whole day into the night sir 
That order is entered pursuant to MCR 4.201H. And that's for the preservation of the property. Sir? Yes. May I add something here? <laughs> sure, you won. Now go ahead and I guess snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Go ahead. <laughs> when when this occurred, I was able to take a plumber into the bathroom that flooded, and he already told me they have to take apart the bathroom floor to find what is leaking. It will take up to a week. When this occurred, I offered Miss Cotterman a week stay in a hotel so that I could fix it, and she refused. Look, thank you. Ellie. I'm ordering the motion that I have here is to order is to allow you into the premises to fix it. Do you still want to pay for a hotel? I read that part, and she doesn't want to go or wants a certain kind of hotel. I can't do anything about. I'm not going to do anything about that at this point. I I don't. I don't want anything about that. I'm saying I may need a couple of days. I'm giving you the fifth. Okay. You guys are coming back on the eighth. So if it doesn't get done on the fifth, I'll rule again on the eighth as to what needs to happen. But you get as much done on that part. I just can't believe you guys can't even come together to even just make a common sense decision. Counsel for the plaintiff, prepare the order, get it to the court for my signature. Sir, I have one other question for you. Her lease ended yesterday. She has no okay. lease. Okay, that's fine. Why? That was, not a, that was not a question. That was a statement. That's a statement, but the statement was because we have an eviction. We're asking for an eviction. This is why you have a lawyer. Yeah, there you have it. Right there. They just, that shows the, the whole situation. This landlord makes a lot of sense. It's understandable. She's saying, look, it's my property. I can't get in to fix it so that it, it's habitable for not only this tenant, but another tenant. Um, although this is what I don't like about judges. He does it. I, this is being nitpicky, but he, he acts like it's both their problems. It's the tenant who's causing the problem here. We had an issue with plumbing. He, the tenant won't allow the, the landlord to fix it. And now we've got problems with, for not just her, but for other people in the building. Uh, and he, and he sort of came to that conclusion. Um, and then she's saying, you know, I, I we're past the lease now. I want her out, which I get it. But it's not before him. I, I, law is just not uh, what you think logically. It's just not your intuitive best guess as to what should happen. It's law. <laughs> so I, I feel for this landlord because she's doing everything she can. She's offering to pay for a hotel. She wants to fix the problem, but she can't. And what she's asking the judge makes good logical sense, but no legal sense. It, it, that is not going to be addressed until the 8th because you, there's notice requirements and this and that and the other thing. We have a date set. He can, he has, he can take action on that date uh, in terms of the, the order of possession or what, what, however they file that, but he can't today. What he can do today is say, uh, I, I'm, I'm get, granting you access to your own place to fix it under this code provision, and that's what he did. Oh, it's frustrating because I feel for the landlord, but she doesn't know what to say. I, I don't know if she's represented or not, but an attorney would have cut her off and said, no, the, the, here's what we can and can't do today under these circumstances. We'll see you on the Linden Park versus Derek Stewart. This one's even more fun. Mr. Stewart is not logged in. Judge, I did receive an email from Min Kim asking about this case, and I Thanks sent to her not too long ago some of the documents she had requested. Is there an appearance from Min Kim in the file? There is not. Your Honor, I thought oh, I saw... He's here. I, thought, I, I am not appearing for Mr. Stewart today, but I thought I saw him in the Zoom courtroom. I know. We did not... He, he's top left. It's pretty funny. He starts waving at the judge, but he doesn't talk. He starts very charming and goes downhill fast. Pick him up. Did you see him? He is. You got him? Where? Oh, he's waving his hand. Oh, there he is. There he is. Mr. Stewart, can you? I see you waving your hand now. Can you talk to me? Sure. 
Okay. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Have you, uh, this is a termination or? It is, Judge. All right. What were we, Mr. Stewart, what were you doing on this case? I don't know. I'm suing Lyndon in part. I'm trying to fight it. They refused a jury trial. Then they turned uh, Miss Min Kim. Yep, they yeah. turned me down. They, first, they sent me a student lawyer in training. Thank you. And I told her what I wanted to do. I wanted a jury trial. She okay. So they sent him a student lawyer. Uh, what we'll get into that more, and the judge is not amused by that comment. But again. Uh, if you're if you're being appointed someone, it looks like the intake is is handled by a student. I believe that's Min Kim, who's top center. Uh, she seems rational to the extent she speaks, but uh, again, it's it's not 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 only am I entitled to to an attorney apparently, but I'm entitled to uh, the attorney of my choosing. I don't think he's entitled to one in this circumstance because it's not a criminal charge. Uh, this is a landlord tenant. I'm not sure what it is. I'm guessing it's it's. Um, uh, they filed for an order of possession, but I, yeah, I, I'm just guessing that because we don't, we never get to that substance. But that's what the call is. That's why I'm guessing that. Says she's going to do some more investigating, and we'll get back to you whether we're going to take your case or not. She didn't get back to me because I told her I'm not from here. I'm from Chicago and Milwaukee. Boy, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> anyway. So this is a legal aid clinic. He's not even entitled to this. So he's demanding he's got to have a top notch representation uh, in a town that he doesn't live, but he does live because he's got a lease there uh, for an apartment that he's not paying for, uh, which is I'm, I'm only guessing that because that's that's the most likely basis for for the, the uh, attempt to get rid of him. Oh, the 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 entitlement is unbelievable. Min Kim sent me an email after you told me I didn't know who was representing me. I don't know none of these people here. Yeah. Okay, well, sir. So what? You asked to have somebody from legal services contact you, right? Correct. Okay. So what happens is the intake process is sometimes handled by student attorneys. They are not, they are, I guess, in some way in training, but the pejorative way you said that, they could run circles around you in terms of what they know. <laughs> I love that. I love that from the judge. I was thinking it too. Uh, he, 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 he phrased it nicely. He's like, uh, you know nothing. They're doing you a favor. Stop complaining. So don't try to put them down in my courtroom. To the extent that you are somehow and or another claiming that Miss Kim did not get back to you, she sent you an email. So the oh, question is, are they going to represent you. you or are you going to find your own lawyer? I can't. I'm disabled. Uh, I'm on Social Security. You need to look at me. Could I please show you something, please? What do you need to show me, sir? I told Mary when I moved here on January 7th that I have COPD, I have asthma, and I can't stand heat and humidity. That's, those are my triggers. No thanks. I have a fan in my door right now because they claim they replaced. I wish I wish I could I wish I could have recorded. They 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 put in another air conditioner and it still doesn't work. Look look, look at this. Sure. Oh. I'd taste them all. Sir, I'd are you going all. to represent yourself or do you wish? I can. I can. Oh, this this gets good. I think I can't because I can. Don't, sir, don't, don't try to front me. I asked you a question. I didn't ask it thinking you can't. Yes, I'll represent so you. So whatever, sir, whatever chip you have on your shoulder, you better take it out because you come before the wrong judge to bring it here. Okay, well, can I have a jury? You come before the wrong judge to do that. Damn straight. Am I clear? Okay, yes. Am I clear? Yes, you are. 
<laughs> Mr. Novak. Judge, let's schedule this for a trial. A jury trial, please. I don't have, you need to file the paperwork for a jury trial. You he doesn't even want to tell him. Okay, he's like, oh, a jury trial, he just thinks he can demand. All right, the way the way jury trial, you, you can demand a jury trial landlord-tenant, man. I've, I've seen it, I've seen it in 3B, I've seen it in real life. It's very rare um, because it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But the, the way uh, it is, is you, you, you it's, it's time limited, it depends on the type of action, but just generally speaking, when someone files a complaint and they get service and you have, let's say, I'll just use generalities because it's different, but usually you'd have 30 days to respond and file an answer. And, you, and you, you generally need to file a jury demand at that time. And if you don't, it's waived. The judge doesn't even want to tell him this, but he's like, I, I just want a jury. I just want a jury. Okay, then file a jury demand. Big talker, you're representing yourself. Have at it. You know how to do that? No, I don't. Okay, you haven't done it. I'm going to set it for trial. Give me a trial date. I, I'm setting it for a bench trial. So now you've just stepped on, on Judge Simpson's toes and he's now set it for trial in front of himself, which is appropriate, which is the, the right thing to do. <laughs> Maybe you should have listened to uh, Min Kim over there because uh, she would have had you in a better spot than that, I assure you. August 5th. Non-jury trial in this matter, August 5th. 2022, 3.30. August, August 5th? 3.30. Thank you, Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. What's your name? All right. Well, I just I just thought that was fun. Uh, Judge Simpson didn't even want to tip him off about filing a jury demand because he's looking through the file. He's like, I hope this guy doesn't have a jury demand on file because I, I am going to set it for trial now, which is, in fact, what he did. It's, and it's what I would have done, too. I, I agree with it. This is Judge Knight. I like him. Uh, I will say there's one grading thing here. I absolutely love this judge. I don't want to beat him up, but he can't pronounce a commonly mispronounced word. And it's it, it grates on my skin. It takes a while. I wish someone would tell him because other than that, I think he's fantastic. Um, he, he is he is just robo judge. He just plows through here. And then every once in a while, he stops and flashes a little personality. I don't know why. I find it very amusing. As we go, we also get on to extradition. And I, I was a former prosecutor, but I never dealt with extradition. I thought it was fascinating because he just kind of goes through the process with them. Brian Bell. Uh, Mr. Bell, you charge a one count of violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Well, two counts of that. Your bond is 8000 on each. It's possession and possession with intent. Preliminary hearing scheduled for the 18th of July at 8.30. And I am appointing an attorney to represent you. You have any questions, sir? It's time, sir. All right, thank you. I, I left a few of these on here so you can see it. Now this was from today. So this is Sunday of a holiday weekend. And I just love how efficient he is. The, the last time I did it was a few months ago. I did one of his calls. It just makes me laugh. He, he, he does his whole call like he's double parked and he's got to get somewhere. Meanwhile, I can tell that he's he's he threw his robe on. Other than that, this is a green screen. So he's, he's sitting at his home in his boxers with the robe on. <laughs> and he's going to blow through this call. He does a nice, efficient job of it. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. What's your name? Good morning. Gregory All right, Mr. Benthic, you're charged at one count of driving while license suspended, one count of failure. Failure to signal. Uh, it's 1,500 and 500. 2,000 is your uh, total. Preliminary hearing is the 19th of July at 8.30. Thank you, Pat. And uh, Mr. Benthic, uh, one moment here. See your application. All right, sir. I am appointing an attorney to represent you. Do you have any questions? They didn't all get it, though. Just, just the one guy. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. What's your name? Dietrich Brown. All right, Mr. Brown, sir. Uh, you're charged with 
one count of battery. It's a misdemeanor. Your bond is 5000 There's no contact as a special condition. No contact with April Green. Preliminary hearing is July 19th, 830. And I am appointing an attorney uh, to represent you, Mr. Brown. Do you have any questions, sir? Good morning, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Good morning to you. What's your name? Uh, General Justice. Say, say your last name for me again. I'm sorry. Say it again. Fontaine. Okay. All right, Mr. Fontaine, uh, you're charged with one count of fleeing or attempting to elude uh, the police. That's a felony. It's 5000 is your bond. Red light violation. 500 insurance 1000 reckless driving 1500 uh, it's 8000 is the total preliminary hearing scheduled for the 18th of Thank July 830 and also I am appointing an attorney to represent you you have any questions sir yep. He all, right. A, all right, thank you. An attorney every time he spits out immediate bond and everything set for the yeah, eight thousand is your total. And he's gonna mow it down. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, all right, Mr. Griffin. Sir, you're charged with one count of false imprisonment. It's a felony. I sure what? The preliminary hearing is scheduled for the eighteenth. Of July and that is at 830 uh, at this time there's, there's no contact with uh, Krishana Acklin also uh, yeah. I will appoint an attorney to yes, represent sir. you you have any questions sir yes sir um, that is my fiance and we did together well can't have contact with her at this time, all right? You got to put a pause on that until you speak to your lawyer, sir. You all both right. were arrested. You said, I can't allow you all to have contact. I'm not getting on the news with you <laughs> about anything, all right? Talk to your lawyer, get it situated, and then you all could go back to being in love again, all right? I love it. That's the only time he shows any personality. He's just like, all right, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not going Jerry Springer here. I'm just covering myself. There's no contact. Carry on with your day. Well, how much is the bond? 5000 sir. First thing I told you after I told you to charge. Thank you, Aqua. For you have any other questions? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. You get Hanley? All right, Mr. Hanley. Sir, you charge a one count of... Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act, 5000 is your bond on that offense. Obstructing an officer, 1000 Possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime, 5000 It's 11000 total, sir. Preliminary hearing is the 18th of July at 830. And uh, you're hiring your own attorney, sir? Sir. All right. You have any questions? Um, so my bond is 11,000 total, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yo, keep the noise down. Yes, sir. What's your name? Good morning, Richard Jones. All right. Good, good morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Jones. So you charge a one count of... Violation of the Georgia Control Substances Act, THC vape, 5000 is your bond. Possession of marijuana, less than an ounce, 1500 Drug-related objects, 500 And possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime is 5000 right. 11500 is your total, sir. Your preliminary hearing is the 18th of July at 8.30. At and I am appointing an attorney to represent you. You have any questions, sir? Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. All right. All right. Thank you. Court design. I'm going to spread the, the more word. Good morning, sir. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Good morning to you. What's your name? That's a dear. All right, Mr. Pierce, so you're charged with three counts of, well, two counts of conspiracy to commit a crime, one count of false imprisonment, one count of party to the commission of a crime. Uh, they're all felonies. It's 5000 on each, so 20000 is your total. No contact with Jerry Wilkerson. And... Let's see here, Mr. Pierce. Uh, you have any questions, sir? Uh, no, sir. All right. Thank you. Four felonies, okay. 20 grand. I got it. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your name? There's a Singleton. All right, Mr. Singleton, you charge a one count of criminal trespass. It's a misdemeanor. 2500 is your bond. Entering automobiles, felony. 3000 You can't return to 4780 Old Dixie Road in Forest Park at this time. Preliminary hearing is the 18th <laughs> of July at 830, and I am yep. appointing an attorney to represent you, sir. you have any questions? No, that's it. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. What's your name? Uh, Sheldon Percy. All right, uh, Mr. Percy, your matter has to be continued to tomorrow, okay? You'll return tomorrow. Before I ram it, Josh, okay. usually, the, right, this you. is just a bond court hearing. On that line, my dear. Y'all listen up. On the line. Line on the court. See that line on the court? Right here. On the line. Straight across. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. This is, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to warn you, this is for law nerds. It's a few minutes of this, but these guys are all in um, for extradition. And I've never dealt with it. So to me, I was just like, this is fascinating. I just I just want to see the way they handle it. I mean, I realize it's just this this situation. And, and also it it surprised me that. Well, you'll see. Listen up. You are these are your fugitives for today. Yes, sir. Uh, Deputy Bush. All right, gentlemen, good morning to you. All right. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, good morning. All right. So listen, um, all of the rights that I outlined. They all apply to you. All the constitutional rights, they all apply to you. Yeah. So uh, Joshua Brooks. All right. Uh, Bola Adifenwa. All right. And uh, John John uh, Detrell Anthony. All right, gentlemen. So you all Mark. are charged here uh, on warrants or there are yes. warrants here. Uh, right, and I the warrants you. state that you all are fugitives. So first, uh, Mr. Uh, Adafenwa, your warrant reads that you did enter and remain on this, in the state of Georgia knowing that you were wanted by Collin County Sheriff for theft Thank of you. property. It's a felony and they will extradite. Mr. Brooks, sir, your warrant reads, you did enter and remain in the state of Georgia knowing you had an active warrant out of Knoxville, Tennessee uh, for what the charges for, sir, and they will extradite. And then third, uh, Mr. Anthony, your warrant reads that uh, you're wanted uh, by Westmoreland Sheriff for fraud, and they will extradite. It's a felony. So, gentlemen, right now what's happening is that I don't know where Westmoreland is, but they're in Georgia. I, I, the one for sure is Tennessee. I didn't catch the others, but whatever. It's other states, and they're saying, "Yeah, we want them. You, you got them in custody. We want them. They're, those are warrants. They pick you up." I, I, I have no idea how this works. That law enforcement could tell me better. I, you know, I doubt California would pick you up on, on a Tennessee warrant, but Georgia will. You know, it, I, mean, I guess it depends what it's for. If it's for murder, what, that's one thing. But uh, you know, th these are these are all like close, as far as I can tell. The OCGA, which is the official code of Georgia, annotated 
Title 17, Chapter 13, it states that you all have options. You have two options today. Your first option is to fight or contest the formal extradition process here in Georgia. So while you fight that, you will remain in custody in the Clayton County Jail. I'm not granting a bond because you're a fugitive, so I can't give you a bond today, right? So what will happen is you'll remain in custody. You can remain here in Clayton County Jail for up to 90 days. Of course, it can be shorter or it may be longer if there's an extension. However, what you can contest are only four things. The this first is thing. whether the charge that I outlined to you is an actual crime still. So, for example, like some states for marijuana might not be a crime or it might be decriminalized. So you can say, okay, this, this charge is not a valid charge anymore in the location that is seeking to extradite me back. Secondly, you can challenge whether the extradition documents are invalid. So the warrant I just read and any other documents, you can challenge and say, that's invalid. It's no good. Thank you. Third, you can contest whether you are, in fact, the named person. Are you Mr. Adufenwa? Are you Mr. Brooks? Uh, or are you Mr. Anthony? You can say, I'm not that person. You can challenge that. And lastly, you can challenge whether you are, in fact, a fugitive. So don't as, as soon as he said that, I thought, oh, boy, do we have a soft sit in the group? You know, that, that's going to play name games. Turns out, no. Those are the only four things that you can challenge, nothing else. You can't say whether you're guilty or not guilty. That's not for here in Clayton County for the judges here to decide. That's for the respective location that has this extradition uh, pending to have you return. Some other dude did it is the is the close cousin to uh, Shaggy's. It wasn't me. The second option, you can waive the formal extradition proceeding. That means you're giving up the process of fighting. You're saying, I'm going to go back and I'm going to just face it wherever that is and deal with it there. That process uh, will allow either you to be transported or for you to uh, be taken to that location. And that generally can happen. It's so about 10 days. It can be less Thank you, or it can be an extension. It can be longer. So those are your options, gentlemen. Uh, at this time, uh, I must ask you whether you wish to waive the formal extradition proceedings here in Georgia or you wish to contest or fight the formal extradition procedures here in Georgia. Mr. Adi Fenwa. Thank you, sir. I'm with you, sir. All right, so waiver. All right, and I see that uh, I believe Deputy Bush gave you the forms. If you can go ahead and sign all of those, sir. And uh, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? No questions. All right. Mr. Brooks. I'm going to waive it. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, go ahead, fill out the form, sir. And uh, do you have any questions? I was fascinated to see if these guys were going to waive or not. So far, we've got two out of three waivers. And I think the judge did a nice job of explaining this to him. I could see everybody getting confused because they want to fight about the underlying charge. And, and for instance, if he's saying, look, you're facing a charge in Tennessee. I'm a judge in Georgia. I'm not, he, I'm not here to rule on that charge. I don't have jurisdiction over it. Uh, oh, the soft sense we get all excited. I literally don't have jurisdiction over it. What I do have jurisdiction over is presiding over what are we going to do about extradition because Tennessee's asked for you. That's it. Can't, can't get into the substance of the case. They're all the same. It's, it's all the same form duplicated. So uh, once you look at one, all of them will be the same. You have any questions, Mr. Brooks? Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Anthony, what's your what's your uh, decision, sir? Thank you, Zoe Z. Wait. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, I about fell over do you have any wave. questions? I, I'm guessing the, I'm guessing these guys are pros because they're, they're like, no, nah, the, the, you know, fighting extradition isn't going to do anything but delay. It's going to I'm going to end up doing a bunch of time in Georgia before I go get likely get convicted in the other jurisdiction. So let, let's just move on with it. Um, you said when we waive, how long did it take? 
It's 10 days, but they can ask for an extension, all right? So it's usually about 10 days, but they can ask for an extension, but generally it's that time period. All right. You have any other questions, sir? And that's what I was asking. Like, what's the extension like? Is the time frame on the extension? I, I don't, I, it's 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 brutal that the defendant can pronounce the word right and the judge can't. It, I, it really is. And I, I really do like this judge, but, but please, somebody help him. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna ask for. They might say, okay, you know, it's a hurricane or a storm. It's tropical storms happening right now. That we need five days or two days or one day. I don't know. So I don't want you to quote me, all right? I, I don't like giving definite answers because I don't want nobody saying what a judge said because I have no idea, all right? But that's that's the time period, generally. Yes, sir, go ahead, Mr. Mr. Brooks. We born if they ask for an extension? Can you say that again? No. Will we be informed if they ask for an extension? Yes, sir. That's two defendants who can say it right now. All right. Any questions, gentlemen? No, no, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. All right. Good luck, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I have a good fourth. Uh, Deputy Ashu, Deputy Bush. I'm not sure who else is over there with y'all. Deputy Ashu, Deputy Bush. Ashu's not here, Your Honor. All right. Deputy Bush, what's going on with you? Nothing much, Your Honor. You doing all right have, today? I'm good. Have a good fourth. And uh, y'all, in, y'all, I'll see y'all soon. Ah, well, there you have it. I just thought that one was interesting. Uh, I, I, first of all, he cracked me up when he said, I'm not, I'm not getting on the news with you. <laughs> but you have to set it up with, with his with about four of his uh, buzz call uh, norm, normal appearances first to appreciate how funny it is when, when he deviates from the script. Um, I, he, he's a fun judge. I like him. He just he just needs to learn how to pronounce one word. That's all. Uh, the, other, the other stuff was all good. But I appreciate you all coming out. Oh, wait a second. Wait, I had, I, had, I had one here. Oh, Carolyn Regodos, $4.99, my very first super chat. Just for you, Mike. Go for the naughty fund. Ah, thank you. No, that was that was fun. I I just had those clips and I thought, why not? Let's let's do it. And and they were fun. And again, thanks to Chervney and Jess Karras for the for the other clips. What, what did you guys think? Did, did uh, was that what the is that what Judge Middleton was saying? Was he saying I, I'm going to hold you in contempt for not wearing pants, TJ? Because the audio was a little messed up on it, and that was the whole clip, and then it, and then it just went around. But I saw I saw it like five times. <laughs> well, all right, all right. Well, thank you all for coming out. I, I don't have a ruling on that at the moment. I probably did earlier, but I was I was too busy. All right, thank you all for coming out. I will talk to you soon.